Hello, everybody. Over the past 40 years or so, I've really been blessed to be able to make my living doing what I love to do, and that's fish. My job has afforded me the opportunity to travel and fish many different places throughout the United States, as well as Canada and Mexico. But of all the different and exciting places, such as Lowland, Midland, and Highland Reservoirs, to natural lakes, canyon impoundments, to oxbow, sloughs, ponds, and swamps, my favorite by far is moving water. Maybe it's because this was the type of area I grew up on, and maybe it's simply the challenge moving water offers. Possibly it's the scenery and wildlife, or the constant wondering what lies just around the next bend. Whatever the reason, moving water is a very special place to me. And with that said, I'd like for you to join me as we fish just one of the jillions of small moving water tributaries that America has to offer right here in my home state, Tennessee. There's something magical about places of this type. You're almost overwhelmed by the power of its life and motion. It never quits calling you on to move upstream, or like I said, around just one more bend. Here you'll find fellowship with all kind of creatures you would seldom see if you were stalking down a brushy wooded shoreline. Once here, you're a big fan of this wild place. You're in a world of your own. It's yours whether you're here for a few hours or a day. I feel a lot bigger in that current. Get all that, those little hooks all in them. Not a bit. Did you know that creeks and rivers seem to be much more productive during the dog days of summer than most bodies of water? Well, they are. And there's a couple of reasons for this. They neither stratify nor suffer oxygen depletions due to the mixing effects of the current. Now something else you might find interesting, bass tend to live longer in rivers than in lakes because of a more moderate water temperature with lows and highs during the year. So when your lake gets tough, you might consider fishing moving water. Pull, rascal. Better get the whole thing in his mouth. Pretty little small mouth. All right, come here, buddy. Long, skinny thing. Easy now. Come here. My goodness. You know, my granddaddy always used to say, if you ain't hanging, you ain't fishing. Now, speaking of hanging, here's a little tip that'll help free you most of the time, especially when you're jig fishing or using a worm sinker. I call it snapback. Now, all you do is keep the line tight and hold your rod with one hand. Next, what you do is take hold of the line between the first guide and your reel. Now, pull out just a little bit of line like you were drawing back on the string, let's say on a bow. Pull back and load the line on the rod tip. Now, all you do is let her go. 
What happens here, the line snaps back, sending a strong vibration down the line that does a remarkable job of stinging the bait or the sinker free from the cover, especially if it's wood or rocks. Now here we go, watch what happens. I'm gonna pull the line back with my index finger like so. I'm loading the rod tip right here. Now watch, here's the pressure. Now I'm gonna let her go, watch. Bing, and it's free. It'll work the majority of the time. So give it a try the next time you get up or get hung up. You don't want to just sit there and keep pulling or turning the rod and pulling like that. Once you feel that cover, just add a little bit of pressure. Just engage your reel, pull a little bit of line, load that rod tip, and then go ding and just sting it loose, snap free. You'll be surprised how well it works. You know, creek fishing, you really never know what size fish you're going to catch. There's days you, you'll catch a lot of little fish, and there's days You'll be surprised. You'll catch a couple of good fish. I've caught some good fish in this creek. I've caught some nice size smallmouth too. I've caught nice large mouth. It's not really the size of the fish you catch or the numbers of the fish you catch. It's just a fun way to fish. Look at that one come right up the top and, and grab it. That's a pretty little fish. We used to catch these things when I was a youngster. We called them black perch, but they're little rock bass, little red eyes. They're a pretty little fish. I used to catch a string of them and carry them home and get my grandmother to cook them, fry them up. Look, look, look how pretty that little fish is. Red eyes. We call them black perch. I mean, it's, a, it's just solid white meat. Normally, bass are usually much easier to locate and catch in places of this type than they are in a big, large lake, simply because there's less area to fish. Think of a creek as having three kinds of water. Fast, shallow water, in between water, and slow, deep water. And in all these situations, the current will vary greatly. The largemouth prefers slow to non-current areas, whereas the Kentucky, or spotted bass, and smallmouth bass prefer areas as close to the fast current as they can get and even sometimes right in it, especially during the warmer water periods. That's getting it. Come up here, everybody. Come up here, buddy. Mess. Watch how fast he goes back out. Shoom, gone. You know, you're sitting here and catching a little three quarter pound, pound and a quarter bass. And you might catch a Kentucky or a spotted bass. And then a small mouth, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're surprised, and you catch a four or five pound large mouth when you least expect it. There's days you go and you don't catch a fish. You don't catch a fish over two pounds. But if it's size you're looking for, probably need to go somewhere else. But just pure enjoyment, taking a light action rod, light line, small lures, getting out.
wading down the creek. Nothing like it. But nice. It's a pretty creek bass right there. Woo! Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't say bye, baby. Take off.